Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for welcome. Very welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, today, uh, we are going to talk about the SciCat. Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the soil interactions, the Bean Cyber Center, uh, Cheers World, Copal Beam, um, the software rebar. And um, well, we have a long journey. And I hope every, everyone will be able to stay as long as possible. And I will provide motivation about how to use the, those programs or these programs. And I will explain them slowly in, as, as best possible. As usual, uh, we will have, we will save the information, the question for the end. And I hope I can provide the answers. If it's not possible, you can send your questions to the technical support department. I encourage you to, to do so. It's free and also will be very happy to help you in any case. Okay, so something that I want to, to be very specific is that I know that everybody wants to learn quickly and they wants to do the best as possible when you start working in a new software. But at knowing the basics is critical. And after that, uh, you can do anything you wish. And as I used to say, that your, your imagination is the limit. And beside that, um, this is my approach for this uh, conference. Um, I'm going to explain about this software in a different manner. I'm not, I'm not trying to, to do a course or something like that. What I'm trying to explain is the process, the philosophy of, of SIPE, of SIPE, and also to have a nice environment according to needs and, and requirements. Okay. So for now on, um, I'm going to close the camera because I feel more comfortable. And um, in this case, you, if you have any question, please uh, try to do it at, in, at the end. But, but at the same time, you can use the chat and uh, we read it uh, when we have the time or when we consider it opportune, the, opportune, the opportune time. Okay, so um, uh, for now on, I'm gonna try to explain a little bit about the interface of the program. Um, I'm going to, as you see in my screen, I have uh, different versions. We have 19, 20, 21, and always the English version. Uh, this is the first question that everybody asks me, you know, if, what happens if I have the old versions, I have the new one, should I keep this one in my screen or not? So it doesn't matter, you know, sometimes it's better if you are the old user and you have, for example, one job already done with the version 2020, uh, but in the future, if you are working like right now with the 2021, so you can go back uh, in any case, uh, one of your customers uh, um, asks you a new uh, reinforcement or new, uh, um, uh, or you suppose you have a, an, old, an old building and the owner wants to do something more maybe one more flat or, maybe more, or something else. So you, it is better for you to go back to the version, the original version that you started the job and then do the modifications because from version to versions, we have some differences. We are growing and sometimes the, the results are not going to be similar. They are a little bit different, but not so much different in between them, okay? So that's one thing. So now I'm going to start with the program SideCat. Well, I'm going to close it because let me explain you from the scratch what it's all about it. So we have um, about the structure. We have different programs. All of them are related. For example, SideCat is the biggest program. Side 3 d is another bigger program. But something 
you know, like a portal frame generator is, um, uh, is, 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 is uh, we have an interface between them. You know, you can start with some of them, depend on your, on your job. We, but once you are getting older in this business, when you get to know about the software, you can choose what is the best way to start a project or not. So the big programs are SciCat and Site3D. The other one, for example, SciConnect is in Site3D. The program Punching Shirt Verification are in SciCat. The foundation elements are in SciCat. The contour beams are in SciCat. Uh, and, and also in, in the future, in the near future, we are going to explain about this software, Boss Colbers, embedded uh, retaining walls, and reinforced concrete cantilever walls. So um, sometimes, you know, we have uh, separate programs because people are not interested to use all of them. So, for example, the stair section, the stair selection could be interesting for some special people, and they can buy it individually. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, SideCut. Um, we're getting inside. Now we are in the version 2021B. Okay, so we have um, three columns, four columns. Uh, the most important one is the I'm going to talk about the user manuals, the calculation manuals, and the example, example manual. This, these um, papers um, will help you to understand the software. I recommend you to read it and use it. If you have any questions, just please let us know. Um, also, in the center, the recent files show you or you can displace all your job that you have done it. In the first column, you have the to introduce a new so a new a new job, the new files, a different examples. If you click in examples, some of them are are help will help you to understand the program about the philosophy of the program and the environment. About the last column is a bin service center. So we are going there later. And uh, right now I'm connected. And my name is Diego Cuellar. I'm your presenter right now. And on the bottom, you have the Bin Server Center connection. We get there uh, later. So I already prepared for you this, um, this job. Give me a second. Okay, I'm gonna show you in 3D what it's all about it. So <clears throat> we are going to, in Chairs World, we're going to work with this project, okay? But I prefer in, in, in this case to show you the software about the interface. The interface, the, the first button that I would like to explain you is this configuration, the glove. The glove, you must set up the unit. You can also set up something really important, which is the undo and redo actions. By default, we have five options, but you must go up to 20 because it's the best options. You are not going to lose information in that case, um, the I'm going to display display for you the recent files, the examples, for example. Okay, I'm going to open the manual. Suppose you are the beginning, a beginning beginner, and that's the way to do it. Accept that. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me check. I'm sorry. So 
So we go for a file. I'm going to check for, for example, let me check for another file. Well, I'm going to continue with this. <clears throat> so, the the first, I call I sec um, one second. Okay, the um, the way to work in this program is uh, it's really cool. Um, I'm going to help them share with these pictures. Okay, so I can divide the section in four sections, the way to understand the program. So the first section is the setting or the data introduction, which I'm going to escape right now. I will show you later. But the second part is to set up all the, the height of the building and also mm, the sections of how many stories are going to be. You have to do it later and then and you pass here to, you can introduce your columns, beams, uh, slabs, everything in 2D. Uh, you can use uh, yourself with DXW, DXF files or DWG files. Um, you can check your job, and you can review your job in the 3D model, 3D view. So the first thing is just to introduce uh, the first floor for example, the first floor. And then if the, from the first floor, you can uh, get the columns, beams, slabs, and also the, the loads, especially the light loads and, and dead loads. We have two options when regarding to the introduction of that load. One is that I'm gonna show you later uh, that I can, when we are doing the setup, I can introduce that load totally. And in this area, I, I, don't, I don't introduce anything in this part. So this is the first option. The second option is to introduce part of the load, the light load and dead load in that area. And here you can introduce on top of the structure, the, the remaining uh, loads could be the surrounding walls, you know, the internal walls, and some kind of special load regarding to machinery, um, I don't know, any, any object that you want to take in consideration. Apart from that, um, you, once you finish with that load, you can go on and introduce the second floor. So the second floor, the way to do it is just the software, you must go on top because you are going step by step. So you go on top, and from top, you can ask the software to copy, which is in the bottom. So in that way, that's why that's way you are going up and up and up and up. So another option that we have is the the group selection. As a group, you can do you can select maybe four levels, four stories, and or five stories or six stories, and then if they are similar, like in this case. So you by group, you go by group, and you go on, and you continue uh, on top. It's going to be easier that way because uh, um, you are going to save time. But uh, there are some particular things that you are, you must take in consideration. If you, that's what I want to try to tell you. Let me close here because I want to bring a project which is. Let me check. I don't know why it's not uh, loading in right now. 
Maybe another carpet, give me one second. So I don't know why in the English versions I have this particular problem, but I'm gonna find out later. Okay, good. Um, so we continue with this one. Yeah. Okay. So suppose, suppose you have, I'm gonna, yeah. You have, uh, you already have, we are in the second floor. In the second floor, um, maybe you have some difference and changes in the project. So you can help yourself with the one of the files, the DWG files, and continue working. Um, this hole over here, one is for the elevator or lift, and the other one is for the stairs. If you want to create the stairs, you want to introduce the stairs, um, we have two options as well. And one of the options is that forget about the stairs, and you do your own calculations by hand, and you have to, and describe or uh, introduce the load according to the result that you have in this beam, also from top on the bottom. This is one way to introduce the stairs. And the second, the second way is just to use the model, the stairs model. Um, if you finish with the introductions, if it's well introduced, but you, the program automatically are going to do it for you, the, the loads according to the sections and the designs, and also loads taking in consideration in the, in the stairs. So <clears throat> one of the recommendations is that when you are working as a group, any modification that you may have in this group, for example, if I decided to group these three floors because they are similar. So any modification that I will do in one of them are going to affect all of them. So if, when you are doing the, the, the stairs introductions, the group selections are going to give you problems because um, once you, you finish with this law, the, the first uh, stair, the load who are on on this area on this on this beam are going to to create a loop. It's like a, they are doing it. They are copying this this chart this load several times. So the best way to introduce the the stairs is to forget about once you finish the story. The, you you, full, you finish this, the the building. You get rid of this uh, group and then you can start introducing the stairs. Okay, so. Now we can we can go on with the project. And we finish. This is a combination between columns and metallic metallic columns and beam columns uh, with this program sidecar. So you can start working with the columns because the program normally the program give you first you must introduce the the columns the columns these columns could be any shape could be also concrete could be wood metallic that like you are seeing right here and also you can uh, use mixes mixed columns could be any shape and also could be inside instead of getting the reinforcement you can get the, the steel structure inside the the column which is pretty cool. And then uh, generic ones. They will have another section which is, will be a generic one. And, and how to introduce the metallic structure here? Um, we have three options. 
Uh, once you are doing the pillar, uh, you start with the uh, concrete column, and on top, you can introduce, continue with the, the same, the metallic columns. But in this case, you are not going to generate the, the plate work here. You, in the case, you don't do it. This is the first case a scenario. The second case is to introduce in this platform, in the sidecar platform, the, uh, the connections between the columns, the concrete columns, and the metallic structure. So you introduce this connection, this connection, this connection, and the other ones. And when you are finished, you um, activate these connections, and then you will get to a different environment, which is something very similar to the program Site 3D. Once you are inside 3D, uh, you can start introducing all the loads concerning to the horizontal forces, maybe could, maybe will be the, the wind loads or perhaps something uh, in the roof or maybe some tools or equipment, uh, any, any case uh, scenario. After that, in that environment, you can finish it uh, with the uh, joint selection, joint resolutions, joint solutions, and also they give you the best profiles according to the lots that you are taking in consideration. Um, the third option about the metallic structure is using the program Portical Frame Generator. From that, uh, we are going to do that in this section, will be in three weeks from now, and um, in this program, uh, you, in, you introduce just the first particle, could be that one. And you can introduce the first particle with the same section, you know, with this um, program, you can get the, exactly the dimensions. Um, and with that information, you, you can find the straps, the perfect uh, solution for the the um, location of this strap on top of the roof. And also it gives you automatically the wind normative according to the place that you are working. And beside that, when you finish the first vertical, you get um, a checklist about the straps. And also you start exporting the, the the first particle to the program site 3D. Once you are inside 3D, uh, you can continue introducing the rest of the elements and also the the the, the loads according to the needs your needs. Um, but the beauty of that program is that you can introduce the wind the wind uh, um, loads automatically. You don't have to worry about it. And then from Site 3D, the best option you can get to understand that um, we have some requirements from that program to here, but um, depending on your expertise and you need, uh, you can guess the best solutions according to some parameters like, uh, you know, that we are going to see in, the, in three weeks time. Um, beside that, uh, once you finish with the columns, you can continue with the beams. We have several families of the beams. In this case, I'm using some metallic ones over here. Um, well, I'll show you later the difference between one of them. And also, after that, we can introduce the slabs. Uh, I'm going to display the, the icon to show you, we have different slabs. This one is the flat slab in two directional. That one could be the joint in situ slab, floor slab. Um, could be hollow core slab because we had that option. Um, and the last one, this is the steel deck, uh, which is the, uh, where there's a composite slab, composite, composite deck. Um, what else? But there are also we have a contour beams 
we are not uh, that doesn't have any um, um, it's only for closed sections but those beans doesn't have any um, resistance or requirements um, finally what we can do is the the stairs if you want and also the foundation we keep the foundation for the end but um, in the next section that that I'm going to give uh, show you how we are going to approach the soil interactions um, we have now a different way to work in the program so the first way to do to work is to introduce the structure and do the first analysis and with that analysis I can tell the program that I'm not, I'm not going to use the soil interaction, do the first analysis and get the best solution with that, that options. And then I can do the second analysis as uh, showing that they are going to introduce the soil interactions. And from that, according to the, to the results, I will make a decision if I'm going to continue with these selections of the foundation elements, or uh, uh, and if I de I've decided to continue with that selection, uh, I can go up and start working with the best solution for the beams and slabs and columns. Okay. This, is, this is the best way to work with the software. And I think it's that's all. That's all for now. I'm gonna close it. Now, talking about the 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 height of the building, how tall it is, we go for the eddy floor. This is the total elevation. Um, the if we want to join the groups, well, now no, I'm going to lose the job, but anyhow, so that's a way to introduce the groups. Um, right now, if I select this way, uh, these two floors are going to work together. Uh, if it's not, yeah, it's already done. Um, about the loads, remember that I told you about the loads. So one way to, to work with the load is to introduce the light load and the load here totally. So make your counts, make your calculations, introduce everything here any reinforce any walls internal wall external walls even the cover um, and and then you can start doing the, ana the analysis in, in in the other part of the software but at the second the second choice is to introduce part of the load which is this this is the case uh, introducing part of the load here and then inside the structure you can continue developing that kind of load and um, about the, the columns, so I'm going to edit just one of them, maybe this one, just to explain what is all about the external fixity. fixity. Imagine that this column uh, the, is placed in any foundation element, could be a pile cap, um, but that cap, pile cap are com considered very rigid has no flexibility. And that consideration is because maybe the recommendation about the soil solution in the soil lab are telling you that the soil can be, the solution could be the pile caps and, and uh, or footing. So that's pile lab, uh, that's uh, foundation elements. In this case, with the external facility means that the, the elements are not going to move in any direction, not even in X direction, Y direction, or not even a rotation. So that's the first uh, case. The second case with our external physicity is the opposite. So that means that we are considering some flexibility, even a rotation, and we must uh, introduce a different approach because we are going to talk about the, the Winkler model and we can model, as you know, they are doing some, there are some connections or relation between the forces who are in, in getting in the ground 
and also with the soil interaction. So in this case, we introduce a different factor, which is a coefficient, but as coefficients, and these coefficients, we must, uh, I will tell you later how, how we, um, we, how we have to, to deal with this, this coefficient. And also, is suppose you have on top um, another column who are not in the same direction. So it's displaced something in between, maybe in the right side or the left side. So that call it, it uh, without external physicity because the column doesn't start from the ground. And over here, the, you have the rectangular sections, but if you click in here, you have different options, even the generic ones. This is the composite sections, uh, even wood, whatever. Um, and what is important is that at the end, on top, I can use a metallic structure. This is the first case a scenario that I'm trying to, to tell you before, I'm trying to explain you. And also on this side, you have a different uh, buttons that you can, uh, you know, you can learn in later on about the effective lens and if some 50 coefficients, actual system coefficient and so on. That's the important thing, <clears throat> the most important thing. Um, later, so we go for the projects, uh, we go for general data. We call that part the setting and this thing you have to do it just once and that's all. Um, I'm not going to show you everything about this, this part because it's going to take a while, but uh, in general words, um, the most important thing here is this button, which is called by position. Inside there, you can travel, uh, for example, during, in, during inside the columns, you can select the reinforcement tables, could be for columns, mm, make sure that uh, what we have here is, in, is, is you can find it locally, mm, for example, um, for this case, for example, for the circular columns, you have that kind of reinforcement. Maybe you don't need the the last one, the V1, uh, yes, well, for stirrups, we don't need the last one, for example, because you're not fabricating your area. So make sure that everything here uh, is possible or you can find it locally. Once you change one of the of the selections of these tables and you have to make one special table with that table you can name it and choose whatever you want and make sure that this selection is going to be according to your needs <clears throat> if you do a new selections and you accept it now the program knows that you are going to work with that table with that selection and then you will have several options here. And if you send this job to somebody else, to one of your colleagues, they will notice that you do already some modification in those tables. Um, and so on, you know, there are so many features here that I don't want to carry out because it's gonna spend time, too much time. But in about foundations, which are going to work like right now, I'm going to tell you that the stirrups and beams um, we can change that because this one, this is one of the options. Uh, it's not possible with, the, with this normative. But according to the strapping options, isolates to provide a stirrup inside the foundations. Um, with this view, I can show you that um, sometimes if you don't have these options. Uh, perhaps the geometry of the foundation are going to be bigger. That's mean that we have, um, imagine that this beam, the horizontal beam are going to be part of the, the footing and going inside the footing and inside the footing, you are going to get some stirrups in, in between. So that give you a better, a better um, branch, you want to call it branch. 
um, to any moment you are going to get here and uh, they are going to displace differently, but according to this selection, the geometry are going to be less. So don't forget to do that. And about the bin options, the same thing. Provide the stirrups inside the foundation. And the last button on the bottom, you will select the cover. This is a summary about these elements. Everyone, you have to go one by one and choose accordingly to your normative and needs. And I think that's it for this for this part. Um, and well, um, don't worry about these uh, codes because we have you can display different kind of codes. You can you can choose any one uh, according to you know the country it could be Malaysia, Indonesia. Uh, we have now we have Malaysia. Uh, and for the call steam, still we have, we can work with the euro code. You can work with the euro code. Also for the concrete, you can work with the euro code. Uh, for the steel, for all steel, you can work with the euro code. You know, uh, I, I think it's better, it's better with the American code or Indonesia. Well, from the Indonesia, yeah, you can work with the IC well, code. It's, it's, it's up to you. I mean, yeah, it's an example, yeah, yeah. so. Just, I, mean, I want to show you that it's possible, no? It's possible. Okay. Um, well, you can select everything in, like, you are working in America, whatever, you know, it's, you have so many choices. You don't have to worry. In this case, I chose, you know, the Colombian code. Um, then well, I'm going to accept this. Okay, so now we go for the bin definitions. In the bin definition, I'm going to show you one more time the three D view. All right. Good. So <clears throat> um, suppose we don't have anything in the the foundation, we don't have anything, so I'm going to delete everything. Right, I'm going also to delete the straps, delete them. <clears throat> so we have a nice feature here, which is called the, the this like a magic one generating the footing ambience. The program are going to do it for you is something like that. Imagine that you are here, you are located in the center of this column, and the program are going to detect 10 meters and around this 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 column are going to detect which is around. So they are going to know how many columns are in the project and they go 20 degrees by 20 degrees until they finish it and they the program are going to make the decision. So that's the program's decision. If I'm okay with this, uh, we continue. If it's not, I can change it. In this case, I'm going to change the foundations. I'm going, for example, for a new one. It could be a single a column element. Uh, in this case, the, the concrete footing, also the pile caps are in, in the, uh, they are part of the rigid elements. So I'm going to choose the the footing, the eccentric with eccentricity. And now we go just write that quickly. I mean I mistake here. Okay. So if I'm not uh, okay with this, I can delete it by this beam. Now I can continue and extend the beam, this beam up to the end, right? Well, this is my solution, my initial solution. So now I'm going to analyze the structure. I can do it with, uh, without the reinforcement and 
without the foundation elements. So I'm going to do it with the, without the foundation elements. Okay, it doesn't take, uh, doesn't take long. What we are going to see now is the soil interaction. With the soil interaction, uh, the important things I'm going to show you to display. Um, let me check. Mm, some more finish. Almost done, no pouring. Okay, done. So, so the so now we have we know everything which is in in the foundation. Um, if you want to know, you can click here in the drawings. I can show you uh, a new project. The, we go for the foundation load. Now we're gonna, we are gonna get information for the drawings. No, no, this one, sorry. It's not this one. Foundation loads. Okay. So this is a resume about the about the foundation load. Um, the center column, which is P6, uh, you have the set load, dead load, light load, air quick in X, air quick in white, and the axial forces, the moments, and the straps. So this is what I what I have in the footing, inside the footing, can okay, inside the footing. So my interest now is to change or modify what is in, in the structure. The new solution right now in foundation is the soil interaction. So you, we must do first the soil interactions and not to consider the soil interaction. This is the first calculation. So select all of them, when it's finished, you go back to the, uh, you can do the analysis. I told, I told, I told you about the, um, without the foundations, or you can do it obtaining the reinforcements. Now I have these solutions. The, 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 I run the, the analysis, so I go for the foundations and do the designs. We can go the quick designs. According to that stress and effort, the program are giving you this solution. So this solution, I'm gonna show you just one of them. I'm gonna edit, for example, that one. Is the dimensions are going to be 160 by 160 and the height 105. All right. So um, inside this button, you have the uh, paper so the analysis is this one. You get the right dimensions. And also the, they show you that the interaction is not considered. Now, the second calculation, well, you can go on top, 
you can go one by one and you will see that we had so many mistakes here with this um, with this uh, solution so we must go on with all the 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 elements and check whatever we need we go back to the foundation um, from here we, we go for the second analysis the soil interactions we are going to consider the soil interaction select all of them and also here the you can see the footing the subgrade models the subgrade models we by default we have 10,000 tons by square meter. So um, this um, this factor uh, could be different for 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 every footing. Um, if this if that's the case, you can change this factor and modify it. But in in the in the software, the software in what we are going to do right now is something like that show you the the piles and also the footings has to they are right now in the first option is fixity with fixity the software are not are very rigid but in this in the new case solutions we are going to consider some displacements that's why we are doing the the coefficients. We have to introduce the coefficients for the piles. We have to introduce the um, different approach about the uh, axial uh, axial axial stress in the piles in the in the columns. So we are going to do it right now, and remember that you can change that. And also, I forgot to tell you that. Uh, in the software, in the software we have uh, in the manuals the way to do it. So sometimes, you know, we forgot that is um, in, in the lab. You they carry out in the soil interaction, the kind of soil that you are going to work with a plate, the thirty by thirty. That plate, um, you must do a transformation to the original size of the of the foundation elements so we have this factor or this uh, depending on the of the of the soil you have to correct these factors to the right dimensions and besides you know this is what the, what we have in in the manual um these these are the the formula that you must take in consideration para in order to get the right uh, coefficients this is a table showing you just just to guide you uh, in which uh, kind of soils and according to the coefficients that you may have. Um, what you don't want from the structure is this kind of displacements. You know the soil interaction. If you don't if you don't do it right. Sorry. Do you have this in English? No, I don't. Have, do you no, have but this I can. In English? I can I can give you in English this, this I can transfer the you know, I can do yeah. it for you later. All okay. Right. I okay. will do it for you later. I I'm, I have in Spanish because I prepared this conference in Spanish, so I'm using it right now. Mm -hmm. But I will give you this. No problem. All right. Thank so, you. All right. So you can change this coefficient as well. Um, now accept all of them. Change the color and do the analysis again. So I do, I do the second analysis and go it without the, the reinforcement. One belong. Okay, it's done. Now 
you have to be sure that the soil interaction that has been selected or considered. Now we go back here to the characteristics that have been taken in consideration. Now the, the solution change, the, the, the dimension of that foundation elements are changed for sure. And what happened is in the first solution, the first, the first options, and when the, the foundation is rigid, uh, you have a greater moment and the stress is, is different. So the, the upper structure are going to be more reinforcement, are going to need more reinforcement. But when you are doing the soil interactions, you reduce this moment, that stress is reduced, and also the, the elements on top of this, the, the, the rest of the elements like columns and beams are going to be less reinforcement. That's the, the, the option. If I change, for example, this, um, this value, the, the subgrade models, if I change the subgrade models and run the program, for sure, for sure, the dimension are going to change. So there is an in relation between the, the geometry of the foundation and the loads that we are going to consider. <clears throat> so the right way to do it is to do first this analysis. Well, once we finish this, this, the upper structure, you can run this analysis about the foundations and try to make sure that everything is gonna be okay uh, everything goes well in the foundation. You are the ones who are going to make the decision to do as much, uh, to, to go farther in this kind of a solution, because this is an iterative, iterative uh, option, good for the design. It's, this is an iterative solution. So you, you can imply yourself in working in that part. And if you got a, and not too much difference between uh, the first calculation and the second one. You are the one who are going to make the decision with your well known about if you are going to take a, to finish the, your job according to these, these results. Let me check here. Um, this is an option we'll, we'll give you uh, if anything is wrong inside the element, these elements. Nothing is wrong, so. Now it's okay, we can accept that as a value. And now we can go up and start working, you know, with those elements, you see? Now everything changed. So it's up to you to modify whatever you need. Now the geometry fits in what I have. And if I run the solution with the effort, the right effort, for sure, the some of the beans are not going to fulfill their requirements. So I have to change their informants a little bit and some others, we cannot do it. You, we don't have to do it. Okay, uh, about the uh, slabs, um, we have a panel here, which is quite interesting to show you around. And um, this is the first one, which is this is called the joints uh, floor slabs. This is for the pre-stressed joint slabs. I'm doing it right now the joints floor slab. And the after that, the one is the metallic one, the wet, um, this is called wet joist floor slab, and also the timber one. <clears throat> For the hollow core slab, well, and I have no, when in the, in, the pro, in the project that I already have, um, I have something in mind. I did something, but right now this option, because the, my first option fails, so I open a different file, but in the, op the option that I already have for you, I have some solutions. If I introduce the, if I change from the Spanish normative, for example, uh, you, will be, you, you will be able to display all the Holocaust slabs who are available. But even in any case, if you have in your area uh, some fabricators who can give you tables or information regarding to the mechanical uh, properties of these of these um, slabs, you can introduce yourself or you can send us this information to us. You can send us, and we prepare 
this, this information available for you for the, for the future. About the composite lab, um, <clears throat> uh, we can go for the from deck or the composite lab, com composite deck. Um, I'm going to display this one because it's important to know that uh, some of them, some of the people can build it up this information and they may think that everything is going to be okay, except for this, uh, this part. This value, this uh, M value and key value, these values belong only to the fabricator. And this is um, um, something that they have to do it internally and they have to calibrate these, um, these materials once in a while. So the M and K values are coming just for, from, from the lab. So you must ask the company to bring you these, these two values. Um, for the waffle slabs, so you have several options here. Uh, flat slab, we are using it. Matte foundations, now we have to work with the subgrade models. Mm, this is a, just, just a reference. It's not uh, the right solution. The right solution is what you get back from the soil uh, lab. And awaiting any, any, any definition, no? I think that's all for the, for the slabs. Now for the beam and beam definitions, we have the first one, which is called flat slab, flat beam, I'm sorry, flat beam. That's in the architecture, of, from the architectural point of view, they like it because you, you don't see it. We use it a lot in the drop beam because we need to define, you know, in areas with the seismic, seismic uh, areas are very important. So we use this one, that's the most popular one. And I'm gonna escape that. I'm gonna to go for the foundation ones because uh, the foundation, the foundations, uh, beams like these ones, uh, you will see it right away because you have to introduce the subgrade models and also the Persistent situations and accidental situation, the tension, the tension of the soil. That one, which is a non-structural point of view, um, this the we use it a lot. Um, we can introduce even a, um, a foundation lab with this frame. You can use it as a frame when it's, when it's the contour is is close. The program are going to ask you what kind of a element, the size, the dimensions, the width, uh, according to your needs. Also the metallic one, uh, concrete, also timber. Um, I think this is it for this part. Now, mm, as I told you, um, my concern is just to show you around, okay? Um, now we go for the files. I'm going to open a different file. Okay, so in this case, um, I'll show you in 3D view. So that's the building. Um, we have a central core, which is, this is the central core. Uh, on top, uh, it's only, it's, it's uh, in, less kind of individual uh, chairs walls. And we have lateral walls over here, one in this side and one lateral, another in the other side, in the opposite side. That's another one. So um, we are going to work with the chairs walls. In side cut, we must define right now what kind of walls we are going to work. If I'm going to edit one of the walls, especially this one, uh, we have now 
something to to rem to to choose, which is the chairs world, because if you don't do that, do that, we cannot go through the chairs world designs in the uh, open bin environment. So also you have to label them. This one is chairs world number five. Um, for in this for this core, they have two sec three segments, and if you click in one of them, it's called it's labeled it SW1, this SW1 again, and the last one SW1 again. So you have to label all of them. Okay, label all of them. And the second thing that you have to know is to do the same thing with the beam. The beam selections, you have now two different commands. Could be the automatic copy beam. You can do it automatically, or you can start using it uh, to define a couple beam. A couple beam, you have three options. One is automatically. One is that you are going to do it with the, the diagonals, but you have to choose it. And the other one that you are not going to consider anyone as a coupled beam. So if once you want to assign one of them, um, you, 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 you see the, the, the color are going to change. This is, this is going to be a coupled beam. You must do it uh, one by one. Those beams are going to be different. I'm going to display one, just one of them. This is called the dropped beam. You know, the sides are very remarkable. This is the 30 by 100. Um, they are very rigid, very strong selections. And before going to the, the solutions, um, because it, it's already done the, the calculus, the calculation. I'm going to show you something which is, sorry, it's like that. I'm going to show you what we had before, uh, just to see the difference between one and one another. So, in this program, <clears throat> before uh, before right now we have the the chairs walls design which is okay because you are going to get the solution the H solutions which are something similar to this one before taking you know, the the chairs wall design and um, if we want to mimic you know that effect we have to introduce the wall and then some elements at the corner one column in this size and the other column in this size. Then you can use also the column working as a kind of wall. We have a limitation, it's the limitation is one to five. If it's greater than that, I'm going to consider it as a wall, but in this case, uh, it's not like that. It's just a column. The third case scenario, which is, uh, we call it um, kind of walls, but uh, um, I'm going to show you where to find this, this, um, this where, 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 where to get it, because it's a different approach. Um, in this solution, this kind of wall, it was the first selection from the program uh, when they tried to do the walls, and they have some limitations. One of the limitations is that on the bottom, if you just start from the, from the bottom, and the dimension is going to, the width is going to be 30 centimeters. So you have to continue up to the end with 30 centimeters. There is no way to do it. If you change this uh, geometry, the program are going to tell you that something is wrong. Another thing that is, is, is impossible to work with this is that you cannot connect another column in this corner and the opposite corner. You cannot do that. Um, and also it's kind of quite difficult you know, to introduce different elements. In this case, it's possible to do it with, uh, with the beam. I can connect them, but I sometimes make troubles, you know. Um, the, uh, the last option, which is the, the wall, the, the chairs walls, that chair walls, 
um, it's okay, I can work with that. I can introduce uh, different elements, very easy, very easy. You can introduce, you can connect with the bin, you can connect with the columns and, and so on. Even the slabs that you are, you are seeing right now. And some of them, all of them, they have two bins. One bins on top, which is gone, you can see it right now, and one bin on the bottom, okay? So one every time you, you, if you have a portico frame, in this case with this beam, and you want to introduce in between the and this wall, you will have problem because you already have this column, this beam. So you must get rid of this beam in order to introduce the wall because the wall by itself has uh, another beam in, over here. Okay. So now, uh, what I want you to show you is an, um, how they perform in, in the project. I defined, for example, here in the additional load cases, I introduced two wins options. And in these two wins options, well, don't worry about the, the wind selection loading, about the call, because it's an, this is an example. Um, now I can go for the results straight to the deformation shape. In deformation shape, I select here uh, the simple low cases and the wind because I introduced only just one direction uh, according to the win, win options. So I'm going to this to run a performance about the uh, the found, about the elements. I'm going to turn a little bit. As you can see, um, the there are some of them who are more rigid than the other ones. So the best behavior of this case is the one who are the walls and the columns. But um, the other ones, they get some more, some more displacements in that direction, but uh, um, the best solution is that one. That's why we are going into the chest walls, okay? Once you know this, and also um, I forgot to tell you that as you can see here, the, um, the discretization of these walls, especially the red ones, are very symmetric. That's why when it's difficult to introduce uh, different elements because one point of this, any, any triangle that you are seeing right now, we, have, we are considering six points. In these six points, there are three in the corners and three in the middle of the size of the, of the triangle. Triangle. In every point, we consider six. Um, um, yeah, every triangle considers six points. In the in the walls, the discretization is a random one. Uh, you see, there is no order, and that's why accept more elements like columns and beams and whatever. Even holes you can introduce holes inside this. So. Once already done with this, we can go back to the about the about, about our example. So now, um, it, well, this this particular job is going to take uh, around ten minutes or fifty minutes to do the analysis. Um, it's done already done. Don't forget to select the couple beam. Which one are going to be couple beam? And which one are not? And also the walls. And it has to be as a chest walls. Um, when it's done, you go here to the beam uh, center center. <clears throat> the beam cent beam server center. Uh, you can con you can link or you can you know you can start from scratch and link it. When it's linked, it, you can export it, and then you will be in our platform. That's the way to do it. All right, so now that we are going to talk about the bin server center, and uh, just for change, I'm going to show you something very specific, very nice. Uh, I hope you are going to appreciate that. Um, is something like this. 
um, just for a change, um, uh, it was in the year uh, no, around 1800, something like that, <clears throat> in in Paris. In, um, I'm going to tell you a story. Basically, I'm going to make it short. But uh, in that year, in those years, in the years 800s, in the city of Paris, they had the brilliant idea of running a contest. The contest consists in, in of identifying idealizing the future of the construction industry and also the role of the architects and the civil engineers in the year 2000. So for the guy who wins or uh, the winner, they will receive a certain amount of money and also they will do a stamp uh, commemorating such an event. And um, I'm going just, you know, to show you this. Okay, just gonna be quick, just to give you an atmosphere about that. This is the Notre Dame Church. Um, and you know, just recently, just years ago, it, it was burning to, duck to the ground. And it was a pity, you know, it's terrible, terrible ha things happening in Paris at that time. And um, they are rebuilding it right now. Um, for well, those guys who knows this this church, the Notre Dame Church, uh, they have a beautiful job inside, especially with the uh, you know this uh, crystal crystal work. Just the atmosphere is what I want you to to show you. you no, know? <clears throat> this atmosphere. I don't know what is this place. Which would be something I don't know in, in Paris somewhere in the Paris. In Paris, um, it's a lot of traffic. You look at this guy. This guy, he, he, he tried to to cross the street, but he couldn't. You know, this guy, look, this guy, and he put his life in in race, you know, <laughs> and he tried to cross, but. It was you know, around those years. This is the obelisk close to the museum, the Louvre Museum. People around, local people. <clears throat> okay, so that's it. Um, now, the, the winner he he did something like that. That's the stamp that win the contest. So these guys, these guys, if you look around, if you look around, try to figure it out what it does. Over here on top, you see the year 2000. So, um it's quite quite okay you know it's interesting to know that um they have what you see here is a crane they are lifting some stones they're building a wall uh, they have some kind of tools but kind of tools are not very uh, quite definition they don't have quite definitions and also they are not like hand labor around it's just one guy in this cabin pressing some buttons and checking some drawings. So for that people at that time, that was the future. So what is important to know that is they are not very far from what we have right now. And, and perhaps what we have one second. Sorry.
Sorry, one second. So what we have is um, in the solution at that time, it was something like that. Sorry. Now what we have could be something like this. Okay. Take a look. Um, it's quite impressed, but we are not very far from here. Um, as you can see, there are people, two people working with some huge data, um, transferring that data from one place to other, another one. Um, my idea is to, to, to ask the same question, what is gonna be the future of our engineers and their our industry and our construction business in the future. So we can do that right now, something similar in tables and screens, but we are not very far from here. This hologram could give you a nice idea about what, what I'm trying to tell you. Now we have our platform. This we call the BIN Service Center. In the BIN Service Center, you have to deal with information, huge amounts of information. You transfer these information from one place to another one. And also we have an algorithm, very intelligent, smart algorithm, so are going to work with this information in some different ways. So the way to store this information is that we have, an, we have the cloud. And the cloud, you can first, you can save the job, and then you can store it. When it's stored, you can delete it. And also, these, the, the, we need a synchronizer to move this information to one place to another. If you, as an engineer, you can work in a, in a very specific team. You have a cooperative work with different people all around the world and the, who can enjoy your project. You can share the project. You can invite people to our platform. And also you can, um, just an example, suppose you, uh, we have a guy or company working in Spain, but they have something to do in South America. So in our platform, um, we have people who are already part of the work of the group and this uh, give you the the synchron the, the algorithms are going to look for the for people who are located in South America who can help you to develop that project and also in the, that people knows around know the city knows people know the factories know products knows everything so for you it's more convenience to find out right away who is working there and who could be your partner or could be part of your or your, or your projects. That's what I, this is our proposal. The group of engineers in Cyber Engineers, they have been working in that part and um, they are doing such a, such a nice work that uh, it will help you in many ways because some of the programs are free so in other words, it has some cost, but in general words, this free is free. I can tell you that just uh, recently, um, because I work in the technical support department, um, I have a friend who once he, he's, he's, he knows very well the program Archimedes, and also they have it in, our, in, the, in the platform, in the open bin environment, we have something similar, which is the quantities. And this guy, this guy is very well, uh, he knows very well the program. And now because of this net, uh, he's, he's going to work in, in, in United States, in California, no, in, in Miami. So he's moving uh, from Colombia to Miami. And he's going to work in this platform. Everything is free. And one of the beauty of this thing is that these guys, this guy, he found a job also in, in America. Um, you know, the small companies, they, they cannot afford to buy a software because it's very expensive. So in our platform, most of the programs are free 
and this guy is working, is going to work in two weeks' time. He will be there working in in in, in this um, in this in this country, um, and it's going to be easier for him, you know, to to use these tools. And uh, he's very happy, you know. He's very happy because uh, we have different uh, programs. We have more than hundred programs who can you who can you 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 can use it. So I invited you, you know, to be part of this group. I want you to be part of this, the future. The future is now. That's what I'm, that's what I'm telling you all the time. As I said to to everybody, that um, don't worry about the the, of the 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 programs. If it's they are doing, if you are one of the guys, those guys who are very picky, so who really wants to know to dig to dig and dig until they find oil. Uh, if they want to find the, the the sources, if you are doing okay, if you have no, if you, you have some mistakes, don't worry about that. We have even programs, uh, papers showing you. For example, one of the programs in Psych, I'm talking about the structural designs. Some of the programs that we we develop, which is the SciCAD, is similar to the program ETABS. So ETABS, if you want, I can show you. I, I can give you that paper. Will give you uh, the the solutions or the comparisons between softwares. Um, this is something um, interesting that uh, you must take in, in consideration. Okay, so once we finish with this, we can go forward. We can go forward. Um, well, I'm sure I will show you the the. the well, the first thing that you can do is just to type vincepercenter.com uh, um, by Cyber Engineers, and you will get straight here. So um, the first thing that you might introduce, your, you have to be registered here, give it a name. Um, also, I'm sorry, the register form is like that. Well, wow, so this is the project. You have to, re to be registered. You give it your address and as your email, um, telephone number maybe, um, make a code, um, and then you, you are in the pla in, the, in that platform. Um, once you are, the, for, from the first time, you will see on the left side, on top right corner, you will see a flag according to the language that you are going to work with. Um, just choose it. If it's later, you want to change the language, you have to go here to reference. In reference, just go down and change the language here. Um, another thing is that uh, when about home, we will go to home. Once you are registered, you have a bunch of people who are going to work with you. The platform has some Algorithms who are going to search around and and they you will receive new job is coming in the platform you will receive information about the job and if you want to be part of that they will you can send an invitation and uh, to the owner of that project um, to create a project is just to click here give it a name and uh, also here you have you can do it uh, differently. You can visualize this to other to other people. You can visualize only in the Vincent Center. You can visualize to the contacts, your contacts, or just not visible. Then you go for the type uh, project, uh, which is a professional. Could be just one test or could be other. And finally, the management and collaboration request could be open to anybody, go up into my contacts or close. And finding some description about it. So this is the the starting point. Once you are, you have that, you can create the, you already create the project. You name it and you start working. That's what I what I have here is several projects. And I'm going to open, for example, this one in particular. Um, um, you know, most of the programs are free. Um, you know, once you know that if something is free, you will just spread like like, like the fever and like the virus 
COVID-19. Um, in this example, is something that we have in the platform. Uh, it's a software, which is a program, which uh, is, is really popular right now because um, we call it COVID-19. In this, you introduce the, the should be the, the magazine or a store. Um, it gives you all the requirements that they already have in the European community to, to work with. We have some, and at the entrance, you have the kind of uh, cleaning staff, you have the distance, um, the, let me check. Okay, now you will see it. You have a counters. This is the social distance you might, you might have. And then you can get inside and turn, turn around. This is the mobile area. This is the um, continue, you can travel inside. See, so this this program is pretty nice, and also let me check one second. Take a little while. If you move around, you will see everything. You have several programs. You if you if you with this place here, the commercial area is the, this, this program is called commercial. This project, you have the the Cipetern docks, you have the Toshiba elements, you have the machinery, the inalambric red, the distributed telecommunication, masonry, furniture, the water equipment, the COVID-19 prevention measures, the chanting room furniture, and so on, so on. You have also the, the fire a sprinkler, something with uh, the light, the suspended ceiling, uh, and so on and so on. So I display all of them just to show you that some people, we are working also with fabricators, and that's why some of the products, some of the programs are free because you can use it. They already pay for that. So now you, we are getting inside. Um, one of the things of working with the Vin environment is that you can, uh, you are working with different files. So one, the com one common files is the IFSC files and GLT files. Some programs like Revit, for example, this, this is one of the most popular programs in the market around the globe, uh, as well as this one. Um, they will have an API open. And you as a programmer, programmer, you can get inside the program the, and do some different commands, um, but you might know very well what is what you are doing. That's what is open. But in in this case, particular case, uh, we have a plugin for Revit, and that plugin um, helps you introducing that format. The IFC format um, coming from Revit software are not well developed. So that's why you must, uh, we, we have that plugin. But in any case, in, in, anyhow, if, if you are using different program, for example, architect, 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 sorry, this program, the API is not open, but the, the, the file, IFSC file, is really, really quite remarkable. It's, it's really good, and we don't need to work in that file. So I prefer to work with that files instead of going to Revit, but now you will have everything here in this program. You have it here. It's free, most of them are free. Uh, as I told you, is, is I invite you to, to come and join us and be part of the future. Uh, you can see, you know, the, on the ceiling, you will have the fire detections. Yes, this is, it's really nice. Okay, good. So now, um, sorry, over here, I forgot to tell you that something to delete. This is always a regular question here, how to delete. So once you are inside, inside the project, the program, on, inside this program, this project, sorry. 
Well, take a while. You can click here in these three buttons. You can store the, the project. When this is stored, you can now we can go to develop all the projects and then you can delete it. Um, and let me go to home again. Okay. Um, okay. So suppose this is your project. And now everybody is going to know about your project. Yeah, they will receive an invitation. It's up to you to tell them if it's okay or not to work with you. You can arrange the project, you can arrange everything. And you have a timeline. You know, we have a timeline for every project. So uh, let, me let's, let me display another one. Okay, in this, uh, in this section, and uh, you have all, all the projects, but you, you click in file projects. Now everything is in gray. Now, if you choose any of these, you can get rid of the project. If you are not uh, belong to the project, you just not be part, you don't want to be part of the project. You just, you know, just for, forget about it. So you, you will be out of the project. You can delete your project, but at least you have two options the first option is to store it in the in the in our cloud and the second way is to be sure that you are going to delete it um i think this is it for that um there are another educational point of view in educational is something similar to the project but in this case are um, thinking about the university level or some um, companies who do courses or something like that. So it's made thinking on that, on the, on that um, environment. So you as a professor uh, can, do, you can introduce to your students to all the elements or requirements to develop the project. And you can see right, right away who is working, who is missing something. Uh, maybe you can also give titles or diploma about the the, the final process of the courses or the course. Um, and uh, it's, made, it's what's made in thinking in that way. Um, for the other ones, you can look around and search for yourself. Uh, I think the most important point here is the store, which I'm um, going to open it right now. Uh, you can click here and look around and uh, be sure that uh, you type it in the right because he's something wrong i'm not going to search but uh, you can see all programs that we have available about the structure design we have the streaming chairs walls that we're going to work right now the streaming rebar which is going to be the end of the presentations and also you have the streaming analysis which is okay now it's getting better and better and in the future, in three weeks' time, I will cover the Streaming 3D. Uh, what else? Uh, something new. Um, well, not new. One second. Well, we go back in you know, one second. The next webinar, we will talk about the Site 3D and Struvina still. Uh, right, Joe? All right. Yep, yep, yep. So okay, um, so yeah, I think so. Uh, apart from this, we have so many features um, regarding to the um, um, advice. Is, is called um, I forgot the name. Sorry, it's um, uh, intelligent intelligent uh, tools like the telephone we have an application for 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 your mobiles application for the tablets and also for the, the google augmented reality thank you vincent augmented I'm reality the yeah augmented reality so that augmented reality you can also keep it in your watch um suppose you are traveling in the country and you are expecting to get some result from uh, from the project and some of your colleagues uh, already done it, so you receive a message in your watch telling you that the form of the documentation is done. 
Um, so you see, is we are getting you know updated. Uh, I'm enjoying, you know, I'm inviting you to be part of this. So uh, and, and project, I think another thing Leo, that uh, maybe it's also interesting for most of the people here is the new site architecture because they can model in, in that software and and then import uh, yeah. it here in, in Sidecar or Sidecar. Yeah, oh, well, maybe this is a topic Luca. that we can talk in the Luca. future. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good point. Uh, thank you for reminding me that, uh, Vincent. Um, this is the, the software. It's called Cyber Architecture. This guy that I already told you who are going to work in the United States, he learned this program so quickly because we have conference in South America all the time. Even if it's in, well, it's in Spanish, I don't know if you can deal with that, but and this software is easy, easier to manage. He's working with this software. <laughs> and it's funny because this, this guy uh, showed me some of the project that he's charging for that. My God, you know, this guy is so white. Um, it's, it's, somewhere, it's, you know, okay. it's, it's in several languages. It's in, in English, in, in French, it's even in yeah. Chinese and German. Yeah, you can download it and next time I will show you this, this program. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, well, we go for our selection. Now that, uh, remember that we were here, I'll show you, just to update it. Uh, before going to Vincent Center, we, we move this place that we must export. Once the analysis is done, we can export this, this effort and solutions, geometry and stress to the platform. We are going to connect that to that project that already made. The project that I did in, um, in, in the project that I did was this one. I call it couple mean. And one is here. You can work around. You can work. You can use the other softwares. So now that I did that, I did it. So I can I can go back here to the project. I open the project. I make it a new a name. You can name it. You can give it any name. Um, talking about the interface, uh, we have features similar features for all of them. So the one on top, on the right, left side, we got the normative. And this normative is the AC38011, but we have the 14. And the next one is, the last one is from Mexico. But don't worry, we are you are following the American code, so you will be able to work with this software right away. But even so, or other code, they will come in soon, very soon. Um, about the next button is the concrete type. Uh, you can introduce different concretes. Uh, about the steel, the same thing. Uh, about the reinforcements layout. Um, because we have two things to work with, which is the reinforcement diameters or the or the chairs walls. If this this information is by, is by default, but remember that you must think about what you have in in town and look for this information. Um, and they are, one second, click on the button, and we can go down. And this is for the coupling beam, um, the 17 by default, the reinforcements by default. Um, then we go for the anchorage options. Uh, we have the horizontal reinforcements to the end, to the internal intersections, also for the stirrup hook and also for the tie. And same thing for the vertical inf the enforcement. Um, now we have plenty of time to look around. And also for the representation options, uh, I'll show you here. Look, this is that. And uh, reinforcements is going to be two num number, two bars 
number three at uh, 20 centimeters. That's, that's the location. Now we go for properties, um, for concrete, the horizontal reinforcement, vertical reinforcement, the cover, and the size, seismic reinforcement criteria. Uh, and you can click here, you will have an extra information. You got the tables here, so the grid, what show you again what I we, what we select um, about the sections. <clears throat> the section we go by floor. The for example, if you go to the floor number ten and eleven, eleven is just a single a single segment. Number ten is three segments. This is one segment on top. Um, now we go for the segment, segment classification. Okay, in this I'm going to help myself. Ah, oh, for I uh, forgot to tell you something. Well, I'm, well, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm sorry, guys, but I uh, forgot to tell you this. Remember that we did the soil interaction. When in the soil interaction, uh, in the soil interaction, sorry. In the soil interaction, I don't know if you can see it well, but uh, we did an experiment and um, that test, in that test, give you the results. The, the, for the footings and piles um, and, and cap piles, we have the red ones is with no considering the, the interaction. We had the amount of volume of concrete volumes which is around 22 uh, square meters. And with considering or considering the, the, soil select, the soil interactions, we reduce the amount of concrete. And for the bars, uh, for, the, for the steels, uh, we have a graded amount of bars with no considering the interactions. And you see the picture here. It give you an idea. So um, I forgot to tell you that uh, in that job, I was considering the the seismic effect, the dynamic dynamic forces. So um, we have um, in this um, in this uh, soil interactions, we were in the point number one over here, but with the soil interaction we get a little lower, we, we move to a point number two, and that gives you a different results, a different, um, the, according to the, 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 sorry, the, according to the acceleration, acceleration will be less and the period will be with, with greater, but uh, increase the, the performance of the structure. So, Knowing this part, knowing how to work with this part, is could be very efficient for you. Okay, guys. Um, okay, we go, we move on. Um, let me check about the the project. I have a document here, so I'm going to help myself. Oh, one second. Give me one second. Okay, I got it. Okay, uh, this is um, a qu very interesting point. I, I, this is the most difficult part to explain. I'm gonna try to do my best. And um, um, well, le before, uh, when we displace the segment classification, um, you notice that there are some some features going on here. On the left side, you have some um, factors to take in consideration, which are the the end factors and the beta factors, which is here. I think it's better here. So this, um, um, let me check. 
Well, these um, complements, well, and they have and the M factor and the B factor. This B factor are related to the geometry of the wall. Um, you don't have to worry about it because the software are going to do it automatically, but depend on the locations of this of these segments, and the software are going to to select it. But the most important thing to 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 see is the horizontal force. Horizontal force, which is here, which is this one. This horizontal force are in this direction and also has a range. With this range is going to be alpha B alpha one. In alpha one means that every segment, for example, the segment S1 and segment S2, they are in the in that direction of the of the force, the horizontal force. If the elements or segments are in this location, in this direction, that we are going to consider that part of wet, wet, wet part. We call it in English, Spanish, we call it salt, but in English we call it wet. We call it wet. That means that this area are going to be effective one. So S1 and S2 are going to work effectively. And they are going to get more reinforcements. And also talking about the segment S2, segment S2 are not going to be effective some, but we call it flange in English. So that's the only consideration. So now we come out with something different according to the normative about the code. The American code considered that the flange area, they are getting so much, uh, percent, too little percentage about the flange consideration according to the height of the, of the wall. But they are not very precise about this factor but we are following the aero code. Aero code. Aero code is so precise in these terms, and we are following the aero code. For you guys who are working in Indonesia, you won't have any problems. We, we already have so clear that aspect. When it's not the same in South America because they are working with different codes, and we have some kind of different. There are not too much difference, but that's that's the the most important thing to explain. All right, um, okay, that's it for this part. Um, so this, uh, do you remember this, um, pat this uh, coefficient, no coefficients, um, these classifications are, are, are going to do it, the program are going to do it for you uh, automatically. Sometimes, you know, the core of the, of the, of in the in the building are not well displayed. Sometimes have some difference according to the displacement. Could have, could, could have some rotations. Um, that's why we must mm, think about it. So they, they are not very for sure in this particular uh, job. Everything is okay, but uh, in a real job, in a real in a real work, um, could be something very different. But this is the the explanation about this part. And we go for the lateral backlink, bracing, sorry. Well, not see more to say about this. Uh, the tip, uh, every section, you know, this is the first elevation. The, for the first elevation, the program does all these calculations. The combination are here, are well done. You can look for the best one, you know, the program always look for the worst case scenario about the forces. Forces. Okay, you will you will see something like this, and on top you go on top. Uh, well, I better to show you our conventions, the selection forces. This is our convention. You have to take a look, look around about this convention. Um, now the forces, uh, the I uh, know the force implementation, simplification. About the force simplification, um, I got something to tell you. Okay, um, we have three options: the moment amplifications, 
the axial force amplifications and the shear force amplification. For the first one, for the moment, this delta, delta, delta H, we must find this delta H, it's this kind of coefficient. So this um, stress, stress law, dm, this stress law, this data, this information is coming from SciCAD. Okay, so the delta H is what we are looking for. But once we found this, we are, we are getting the, the, um, the, the, the right uh, coefficient to multiply, the, the right moment amplification. This is the explanation about this. About the axial force amplification, it's just a coefficient. We don't need to, to do something, something farther than that. It's just this key paved coefficient that we have to modify. About the chair force amplifications, um, there are something similar. Uh, we have the height of the of the wall, and also on this size is the the chair stress. We are coming also from side cut. We have to find the H1, and from the H1 we get the 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 corrections of the moment uh, moment the chair stress correction. Uh, what else? Well, there are some features. This is a checklist about the walls. And you can define, design all walls at the same time. You can do separately. And about the encourage and split, uh, split length. This kind of tables and a 3D view. So the one on the bottom, yeah, okay. You can displace as a reference. You can go one by one, one by one. But that one, you see, has some problems. So what you are doing right now is that the these two are separate, are working separate. As a group, the court as a group behave behave more strong. And um, the solicitation is different, but at the ones who are separate are having problems in the bottom. So this is crucial to go in the bottom. She, look, you had a, a mistake here. So now we have to find what is the problem. One, and we have, we have to uh, go to the normal loading for the check options, clicking this button. And you can displace now um, everything regarding to that part of the, of the of the column of the walls, and um, right here for the normal dating, you will get the the documentation. Uh, this is not a, a black box, you know. Everything you might have inside, you have you will have the report, a fully report, very well, very well done, according to the calculations. You can look around, and if something is wrong, it will give you right away the information. Okay. Well, I think I crossed the, the mistake. I passed the mistake. All right. Um, then I'm going to look the this is up on the bottom. We can see the segment over here, but at on the left side, on the right side, you have the initial H elements and the final H elements. In this case, are okay. And you can, I'm going to see what is the problem. I'm going to look for the problem. Uh, there are all the verifications. This is the mistake. So you can click and you will have it right away. The mistake, according to the American code, uh, you have to go to the section 11219.4.3. Uh, it's telling you about the, the well, doesn't exceed the difference between the reinforcement ratio, uh, something like that, okay? I can't read it, I'm sorry, I can't read it. I need a glasses. Okay, um, well, you can select only the mistake that we have. You can get a fully report of this. 
click here about the printing uh, printing configuration you can view the complete report you're listing here this is the complete report uh, uh, we will find what is the mistake here check this out one second yeah that's the mistake Okay, longitudinal reinforcement ratio uh, doesn't need, uh, doesn't exceed this this value, All right? Um, as you can see, um, we have, according to this result, we are not very far far from 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 the numbers, from the features. So you, as an engineer, uh, are going to make the decision if you are going to follow these things all the way or or not. In this case, we are very close, so you know it's up to you guys. Um, so what else? I think this is it for this part. You can get drawings. You can, you know, I'm going to this section better. Uh, going to the bottom because we have more things. One second. Um, finally, if we need to arrange something. Click in this button, uh, we get their enforcements. Um, you can select if it's going to be as a as a wet or so it's going to be uh, to work as a flange. Um, you have a vertical reinforcements, horizontal reinforcements. Um, about the edge elements, we have to work with the big vertical reinforcements, steel wraps, land, and whatever. Um, every time you run here or do modify these values, the problem right away give you the results. It's very uh, powerful tool, you know, it's a very powerful software. Uh, I encourage you to use it. Um, then when everything is done, when everything is okay, you can mm, uh, update the information, export to different programs. I'm going to show you the 3D view. It's gonna take a little while. It's really heavy noise. Uh, hi, Diego. There are also several questions. Uh, so I, I don't know if you if you can read the questions later. No, I don't. I, no, I, no. I Jabas, tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell me. I mean, do you prefer we do it at the end? Or how long? How long? No, I prefer to do it at the end because I'm going to lose track. OK. Sorry, okay. guys. I, I will try to uh, to answer the easy ones, and then you you will answer the the more complex. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, well, I mean, you, you can. You it's can almost done. And we, and we will do it at the end. Yeah, I, I'm I am about to finish. Don't worry. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's coming. Oh my goodness. Well, what we are going to see now is a 3D view. Uh, I wanna show you the volume, uh, capacity volume, volume capacity. Um, I'm going to show you um, the, the stress and the play, um, effort. We can see the effort of depletion and resistance. Well, and also we can export to 
the different software like S3 binary bar. Oh, maybe that's some problem here. Unfortunately, I'm gonna wait a little bit. We're happy because we are doing the transmission and take a while, take a while. Let's see. Okay, rookies. Well, well, we go for <clears throat> we can go forward. Um, I'm going to try to do it one more time. Let me see. I guess the problem was that I <clears throat> I did some in, in the three D view on the right left uh, left side on the bottom over here. I delete some of the or part of the building, and perhaps that's what the problem. And now I'm doing it correctly in the right way, so will be will be soon there are different questions for example one this no, says uh, one can this software be used for designing a new construction of a building or bridge I would say for a building, every kind of building, right? And a bridge, uh, Antonio, a few, few weeks ago, was uh, making a presentation of how to design and analyze uh, a bridge. Not every kind of bridge, but it's possible to design so, some kind of bridges. So I, I will send in the chat the, that video so you can take a look. I don't know if you want to add something. Leo. Yeah, um, talking about the bridge, um, SciCAD, you can do that. You can do that. The only difference with other software is that the, the, in the market, you, you have available very expensive software. In our case, we don't do the dynamic forces. That's the difference. But you can create something similar. You can, you can create different loads and you can ask the program to, to analyze the structure uh, with different locations of that load. So um, the program are going to work indistinctly with this load and then it'll, it will give you the best result. Um, best result in terms of the, the, the worst case scenario, they give you that result. So um, it's not meant you know, to, to do um, bridges, but it's possible to do it. And um, also, you can do in metallic structure, you can do bridges, and I will show that part in the next presentation. So look, now it's okay. Um, I'm going to get inside, get inside because that I want is this bulb. It's called bulb inside we're going to get rid of this one second. Okay, good. So I'm going to like that. So if you make a close, very close, one second. Very close, you will get some points here. It's very hard to detect it, but um, oh no. Oh, guys, I think I lost it. 
maybe I lost the, one second. Well, perhaps because we are, um, let me check if I lost this. Well, this is the, the, the solutions that the program give you. You get some effort or stress inside this volume. And uh, oh, maybe on top we don't have it. One second in the bottom. I don't know what's going on. Okay, guys, no. Maybe I lost, I lost the analysis, maybe. I uh, know you have it here. See this is this this kind of I'm gonna click here and touch one of them. Oh something. Okay, good. Look, if I click, if I touch one of them, you will see the results over on top on the right side to the corner. This is the, the walled uh, section for for uh, elevation number nine, the specification composite strength of the concrete, the gross area concrete sections, the total area of the reinforcement. You see, okay, and this is it. Okay, and uh, now we go for the uh, copper beam. Copper beam. Okay, for the copper beam, uh, I gotta tell you a few things about this. Uh, one of the important things is that this is, this beam are very um, very uh, strong in terms of uh, the rigidity. So they have a great rigidity. Also, it has a considered age in relation to this pumps really high, thirty by hundred, and it's used in seismic areas. And also the the mini displays as a drop head beam as I as I showed you before, and then the coupling beam condition is introduced. Um, from side cut, the stress calculation is carried out on side cut, and also the well show you the share the the, um, the interface is the same. I'm not going to get into into that. I'm going to display just few of them. Okay, on the right side, you will, you will, you will have the solution. Um, I have a picture that uh, we, we give you an idea about this kind of reinforcement, which is this one. Okay, that one. So, it's really a lot uh, of reinforcement. It's too much, I think, in some cases. Um, I think I have it here, like that one is better. So you have reinforcements in the middle, and also you have uh, that long, long, long reinforcement getting inside the, the wall. Another picture about that. This is the couple being between walls, and uh, also the edges reinforcements as well. Okay, so um, the, the this um, the the interface is the same thing. I'm not going to go into details. On um, the bottom, you have the checklist about the ray, about that kind of uh, walls. The couple beams, sorry. Also, you can display the check-in, verifications carry out uh, according to the normative. Um, you can check all the beans, the same thing like before, uh, one by one, um, the design of just one bean, okay? Um, I think this is quite 
software, you know, it's not very complex software. And when everything is done here, even with the chairs walls and the coupling beam, we can go for the um, rebar. This is the rebar. Well, no, no, not this one, one second. Uh, find the... Well, could be this one. Okay. Okay, so you will have now just the results about the reinforcement. Um, if you know how to work with SiteCAD, um, we don't have the same editor. Said editor. In, with SiteCAD, you can send this information to any AutoCAD programs and you can work on it, you can modify things. But uh, in this case, what you have here is just a PDF format but uh, you can look for the best location now and send it to print or something according to the SW files. And that's the last presentation. Now it's not uh, very uh, complicated to, to get this information because it's already done. The rebar enforcement is just a software, it's just to, to fulfill all the requirements regarding to drawings and, and you know prepare your job just for 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 for, for work and that's all okay so now we can go for the questions okay Vincent okay I think Vincent you can read the question Vincent, he left us. <laughs> Maybe Diego, you read it. No, I displayed the chat, but I don't. I don't have any. Ah. Let me check. No, I can't read it. Yeah, the same thing. I can. Uh, I cannot see the question over here. No, uh, it's uh, the guy who, who wrote something is in your language. And I don't know anything about your language. Okay, I, but I, I, don't, I don't know why. The question section. That's the question section. Cannot see yeah. the question. Mm -hmm. And I can read it and translate it. Yeah, please. Uh, where is it? I cannot find the question section. In which spot? I think the only guy who, the, 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 the presentator, presentator. Oh, probably the organizer can see it. Vincent, can you read it? The Vincent. Yes. <laughs> uh, Vincent. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, where is the, is the, the only question that I have here is uh -huh. about the bridges. The bridges, right? That one you have answered it already. All right. Yes. I I, I don't. I have no more. Uh huh. And probably. Okay. Where is Vincent? Hmm. <laughs> go to webinar. Audio static interview. 
I cannot see the question. No, not even myself. Mm. Let me see one. See how can I drive with it? Stop, stop. Mm. Maybe we don't have questions. Uh, Finson said they have uh, have several questions. Uh, let me have a see. How is it? Probably I have it here. After I save the. Okay. Okay, there is a question here. Okay, go ahead. Does um, site also have the option to do nonlinear structure analysis for the purpose of performance based assessment? Well, good question. <laughs> I knew it. This, this question is going it's gonna come. Okay, good. We we do the linear analysis. We don't do the nonlinear analysis. Um, actually, we don't do the pushover. But uh, I'm gonna read something which is really important from my point of view. And um, quote from the structural calculation point of view, the calculation engineers hope that say seismology will provide the data necessary necessary for the definition of, of the seismic actions. This definition is directly related to the type of structure analysis that is interesting to be carried out. Now, in the case of a structure with linear behavior, it's usual to start from the modal decoupling of the equations of motions and, definition, and define the action through seismic response spectra, which allows you only the calculation of the maximum response of the structure. However, this maximum response is the most important data on which the structural design is, is based. This form of definition of the action is also using in the seismic resistant design regulation. Okay, I know everybody wants to do it in nonlinear analysis for sure, but that doesn't mean that this is required. If you want to do it properly, yes, you can do it. But in that case, we are doing the nonlinear. Uh, we are more than okay. That's the usual weight of performance, you know. Okay, and end quote, you know. All right, and uh, whether in the future you will uh, do this uh, software to do the performance-based analysis? Well, I'm not sure about it. Right now, everybody's working in the VIN environment. Uh, they are very busy trying to, to transfer what we have into the VIN environment. Perhaps in the environment, we are doing so many things new. Um, I hope that we are going to cover the nonlinear analysis in that environment, in the bin environment, because that's what happened with the chairs walls. The chairs walls, we cannot do it in in the in, in side in side cut software. We have to wait until the bin environment platform, which is what's possible for us to do it. So that's mean that in, in, in the future, in the near future, uh, we are expecting to have that solution for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then uh, another question is that at first you show that you only put the life load and the death load in the example, but in the foundation output, there is an earthquake reaction also. Why it is happened? How do you determine the earthquake load inside? Oh, maybe I forgot to, if I'm, let me, let me look what it is. Look, look for horizontal forces, we can do the wind loading. We can do the seismic loading. And if I displace the, the loading, the seismic loading, loading, we have several countries, okay? So I chose Malaysia, but you know, 
just for fun. But uh, if your code is here, you can load it, download it. And um, you, we can do the dynamic analysis um, and, and lateral dynamic, no? Horizontal dynamic. And we can do both. Um, let me check one second. It's clear. Yeah, we can do the dynamic or uh, modal spectrum, and you can do the static equivalent lateral force. We can do that. Um, for the guys who were asking about the nonlinear analysis, we do the first degree analysis and linear. And also, um, the closest that we have as a second, second degree analysis is the P delta effects just for wind and for earthquake. And it's regarding to this effect for the secondary order effect. For concrete structure, I recommend that we use the value number two. And for different country, I know, for example, Brazil, and he, he, he used a factor of 1.56 when they are doing the secondary uh, second uh, order effect. Um, I don't know if is that uh, answer the questions or maybe I, I got it wrong. Okay, that should be all right. Then uh, can you show what are the codes covered by site? I think it's quite a lot just now. You have, yeah, uh, there yes. is a code as well, mm -hmm. right? Uh, another country uh, code, and that one is a. Uh, uh, yeah, you have several codes here. If I split, display the concrete, you look what you have. You have a lot of countries, normative, you know? You have Russian, South American a lot, France, Italy, Bulgaria, Malaysia, Mexico, Chile, United States, America, Brazil, Portugal, and so on and so on. Spain, you see? Uh, do you have the user divine for that? So that let's say uh, Indonesian, we have uh, our own code. Can we not uh, yet? I think no Indonesia uh, and you have Singapore, South Africa, uh, Bolivia. In the, in, the, in, the, in the wind code, Diego, in the wind code. Ah, in the wind, just the wind. Okay, in the, in the area now, but we have, well, we can get the wind. Uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. All right, probably you don't have it yet for Indonesia. Uh, my question is that whether we can uh, just uh, key in ourselves uh, something like a user defined code. Yes, you 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 can you can introduce manually the data, right, Diego? I mean, for example, oh, yes. you could select yeah. Malaysia 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 wind code and change change some data. Uh, yeah, we will try to, to Look, edit. For example, if you are using the wind code, you can use the general method. This is the general method. And bring the, 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 the code, not the code, the spectrum. You can bring the spectrum by hand, by, by, by user. You can do that All by right. user. Even for the for the seismic seismic law, you can do that. Look, you had the general method um, oh. by user. Mm -hmm. You have possibilities. Not only well, here you can display the spectrum of different different spectrums. I'm not sure if one of those are similar to your country, but uh, at least uh, you can do it yourself. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, uh, due to the massing for finite element analysis, does the program will do it automatically or we can customize the size of the mass element? Well, uh, we have, um, I haven't shown you the, the results. For example, this one is, no, no, I'm sorry. I displayed the wrong one. I clicked the wrong button. Uh, let me see. Um, this report, I uh, really 
quite quite nice. You, first of all, you have the justification of psych misaction. Um, you got the something regarding to the volume of concrete. You had the volume of uh, steel. You have the resume um, uh, amount of steel. Um, you have the combinations who are taken in account. Uh, I'm going to display the, just, the justifications, the seismic justification. Uh, this is the report in about the seismic, seismic actions. Uh, be about the spectrum, the design spectrum, uh, about the design spectrum according to X and Y. This is the most important table, participation of coefficient. That's the total amount of mass that we are taking, taking in account for every mode. Um, this is the total, if we are in the range between 90 and 100, and we are okay. So here we can see which modes are going to carry out more uh, mass. Um, yeah. The question, the, the question is about the uh, size of the mass of the finite element in your model, if we are doing it through the finite element analysis. Oh yes, yes, we do final fine element analysis for the mass. Of course, all the programs available in the market has to do it. Yeah, uh, the pro the mm -hmm. question is that was the size, the size of the uh, finite element. You see whether the uh, size can be determined uh, by ourselves or the program is automatically uh, can do it. Well. In, we have both. The program are doing automatically, but we have some arrangement inside the software uh, that we can um, we can upgrade it uh, this size. For example, if we are doing it 25 by 25, we can upgrade this 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 uh, this realization. We can upgrade that, but at, we must do something. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's something very specific. If you need it, you just we cannot we can advise you how to do it because it's not it's not available in the software. It's just it's a setup. It's doing it by default. Okay, but that, okay. Uh, we can do it. Uh, then uh, there is a question here. Can you show the steel section provided by the program? I mean the database of the steel section. Uh, people uh, ask, what do you mean by metallic column? Is it H-beam, white flange, etc.? I think what you mean by metallic column is a steel structure, right? It's the steel sections. Yeah, steel okay. section. What are the steel sections in the database? Well, let me go for a different project. Let me see. Let me look for a different project. Look, this is a building made in Psycat, but the entire building, this is, a, this is a hotel. This building was made, I don't know, somewhere in, in South America, I guess so. These are pipe cups, pipe cups. Um, this is the project. <clears throat> Um, you get inside uh, different profile. You have different profiles. You know, it's, it, this is possible to do it in SideCut. Everything, everything here is in SideCut. But um, we can use the Site Three D to do the same thing. To do the same thing. What is important to, to know is in Site 3D, we got more options regarding to the solution, join solutions. In SiteCap, you have some kind of limitations, but at least in Site 3D, we'll be get more. 
every profile. I'm gonna show you one of them. Let me see. Okay, let me go for. We're going to edit one of them. Good. I'm gonna maybe the last one. Okay, the other one. Um, they are using this this kind of uh, profile. Okay, but uh, you can use the grid. Well, I'm going to display here. We have this. This is an um, European European profile, but um, we can get for something else. Click here. We have the Americans. You know uh, the table, the American tables uh, profiles. Choose the W. Uh, we have several uh, fabricators, you know, around the world. Um, I know that uh, we we introduced some of the profiles uh, coming from South America, fabricators, and they provide us the technical support, the technical information, and we upload it in the program. Same thing could be for you guys. If you need something, uh, ask for the fabricators and send this information to us and we'll be available for you in the future. So, okay. Oh, that's okay. So, mm -hmm. uh, there is, uh, how is the connection between the concrete column and the uh, steel structure in the steel element and the column? If you have a concrete column and you have a steel uh, beam, let's say, and then uh, whether you also provide the connection system there in the software? Yeah, yeah th there is a solution. The solution is, um, for, um, uh, well, in we have a plate, a plate who we, we all designed in the bottom. So that plate, if you want to, to do it in the column, you you must describe the connections between them um, as a um, that vinculation has to be different. Suppose suppose the column is coming from the ground. Um, that column in the bottom has the vinculation with vinculation. They call it with vinculation. The same vinculation you can do it on top anywhere. If you have, for example, a very tall building and you want, you want to add an external profile, um, a steel profile, and you want to connect that, that connection between the, the metal structure and the concrete, that connection has to describe that way. In that way, you will have the results according to the connectors, the, the reinforcements, and the plates, and also if it's soldered, if it's bolded, or 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 um, how do you call it? And you have two ways to do it, okay? But at, uh, it's possible. It's possible to get a solution. The, that connection, concrete and metal, we can do it. All right. And then, uh, what is this uh, software you presented just now to the BIM software? Is it uh, connected to all the beam software you have? Yes, good question. Um, the, 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 our, uh, our proposal is to work in the beam environment. So that's why we, we start with the architecture from the architectural point of view, like for example, um, energy supply, uh, you know, air condition system, stuff like that. But uh, according to the structure designs, uh, it was almost the last part that we are doing it. Right now we can do it in SideCut. We can, as you can see, I move the structure from SideCut to the open beam platform. In that platform, once you connect that, that, that structure in our platform, then you can go forward, you can, and bring information to that building, even their conditions, the energy supply, and whatever, you know, um, pipes, connections, and you can integrate it in different ways with all the software available in the market, available in, with us. 
basically... everything is gonna be yeah everything is gonna be uh, everything is gonna be in our platform for the beam software right so yes, you can yes, also yes. Yes. Volume, yeah, you know, in, according to accord, according to the um, requirements in Europe, uh, mm -hmm. to be uh, BIM software, you must have the information between eighty percent and eighty percent of the documentations um, on, um, information available for the customers. So we fulfill these requirements. Not only the from the from the structural point of view, but for the architectural point of view, you will have and you can displace enough information regarding to the bin environment. We fulfill that already. In the future, maybe there are some country, countries in in that part of the in of the globe, with in Asia or east is uh, you know, that far far east, that they are more developed in that part. But in Europe. We are following this and we are okay. And now most of the countries right now, they are working in that way. All right. And then another question here, whether the software can also analyze the pipeline, pipeline structural system, pipeline. The pipeline, yes, 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 we, we have that. We have that. Uh -huh. In um, pipelines, in, we call it MAP. If you want to do it from scratch, you know, from what we have done it before, um, it's called MAP. Everything in MAP, inside MAP, and you have that kind of software. But in our platform, it's separate. Uh, the good thing about this part is that you can introduce the pipeline in your structure, but at the same time, you can get the quantities of that pine and the cost estimation about the pipeline. That's that's the, the good thing about the bin environment. So uh, the uh, when you import the drawing, let's say from the AutoCAD in the 3D model, uh, can it be directly imported or have to do to do something like editing or fine tune of the uh, imported uh, cap AutoCAD? Drawing. No, well, in AutoCAD, um, <clears throat> well, depend on, depend of of of, of your, your necessities. Sometimes, uh, suppose you want to do a domo. That domo is very complex, very accurate uh, measures, and you have to do it properly. I prefer to do that domo in AutoCAD. And bring that auto that bring file to our program could be to site 3D or even uh, site CAD. If it's a simple a structure like 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 a, we used to work, you know, like DSW, we are working in 2D. In 2D, everything you do in in any so CAD software could be could be loaded in our software without any problems. The only thing that you want care about it is about the, the no, not the location, the, the right coordinate. Sometimes you, you have too much information in your files that we don't require. For example, the, the, um, the rendering is one of the things that we don't use it. We need just the location of the columns. We need uh, coordinates like that. We don't need furniture. We don't need that. We do not, you know, it's, we not, we better it, uh, get rid of what we really want in the software. But for sure, you can bring that information to us coming from from AutoCAD. Any drawing, any drawing. Oh, but wow. you have to be a specific, no more specific about what you really need. Don't bring a lot of information. Sometimes that file is so heavy that is uh, you cannot you cannot see it because they are too much information you don't need you, if you require bring what is it needed what you needed a few weeks ago Diego, a few weeks ago we conducted another presentation uh, in singapore that it was related to computational beam and then we we did what what you said now like we imported a dxf 3d file that it was mm -hmm. a really high building uh, and mm -hmm. complex building. And then we imported in Site 3D 
and then you only have to assign the lines you have to to assign it to bars in same CD and then you analyze and and that's very easy and and it's the fastest way I you import a DXF mm -hmm. in 3D and then you assign the bars in, inside 3D and and then you can get the calculation the the footings the reports drawings so that's the way all yeah. right uh, there is one interesting question here whether you can uh, I suppose that the question is asking that whether we can uh, simulate, uh, do a simulation of the lowering of the pipe, uh, of a pipeline system, so that the pipe it is uh, lifted up first and then move and lower into an excavation area. That means they have provided an excavation area and then uh, they have a pipeline system and then the whole things will be lifted up, move it to and lower to the excavation area. Yes, 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 yes. We, we have a software specialized on that. Uh, oh. You will see the pipeline. You have exactly the, the excavation area. You can details drawings about that. It give you um, the pipe light pressure, the, the maximum elevation, the slope. They will give you details about the, the, the formula that they are taking in 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 that in the, in the software, we we have that, we have that. All right, good. And then, uh, can this software overall make an evaluation on the time schedule, and give the pro uh, provable solution for the completion of the project? That's mean the time. Uh, uh, the timeline. Time Do you want to answer this one, Diego? No, dime, dime. The timeline. Well, uh, the same the same than the previous question that they were asking about the pipes. Uh, in in Beam Server, you will find a software that is called Site Plumbing that is to do the pipe uh, analysis and also to get the excavation and so on. And the same way uh, in this question that they are asking about the time uh, the time schedule and so on, we have a software that is called Archimedes. It is for project management. There mm -hmm. you can you can get this information, the Gantt chart, the the time schedule, and so on. And then in Beam Server, you will also find another application that is called Open Beam uh, Open Beam Quantities. That is to generate automatically. You can generate the bit of quantities of this example of this big building that they are showing, or a Revit model, or any other other software that is able to export IFC files. So uh, we have also software on, on, on project management and uh, bill of quantities. Uh, this is not, we are not going to show that today, but uh, if you are interested, uh, we can meet someday and, and, and make a, a presentation about that or, or send you some materials so you, you see how to do it. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. and then, uh, the last one is that, can we get the presentation uh, soft copy? I think, uh, Vincent, you recorded this one, right? And yes. then probably yes. later mm -hmm. put it in the server and then uh, audience can uh, download uh, this presentation, wow, video. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. And, and, okay. And, and what about the, the question? I, I read another question is related to composite structures, the concrete and metal connection. Uh, have yeah. you answered that question already or, or not? No, yes. it, well, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, yeah. During the, yeah, yeah, so we covered that. Now, the last thing that I want to, to tell you guys is that this, this software is, is, is really, this software is really powerful. This is um, a hotel. It is the, um, um, what is called Harrison Hotel in, uh, in Colombia, in South America, uh, located in, in Cartagena, Colombia. Um, and this hotel has two pools, two swimming pools over here, and another one on the bottom, on the bottom. Um, the project is running now, yeah, the project is, they did it already in SciCAD. Um, now they are under construction um, because of this, special situation about the COVID-19, um, they're getting slower, slowly, 
right now, but uh, it's just to show you that the program is, is really interesting to, to know. Um, it's good that um, it's not only to build houses or something really small. You can do whatever you want. Um, that's why I'm, I insist to, to tell you that the best thing is to know the basics about the program. It's critical and then you can go forward.